Pacific Rim Uprising is directed by Stephen S. DeKnight and stars John Boyega as Jack Pentecost, son of Stacker Pentecost, played by Idris Elba in Del Toro's first film. And this time around, the rebellious but courageous Jack leads a group of Jaeger pilots into battle against a new onslaught of kaiju. Del Toro's previous film was a bit of an empty human experience, but as a vehicle for delivering exciting mech on monster mayhem, it was fun. One of the better parts of that film was Idris Elba's performance, so it makes sense that they'd focus on his kid for the next installment. DeKnight is a filmmaker who comes from a mostly television background, having worked on shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Daredevil, most recently, and here his considerable talent feels jilted by an aggressively commercial experience. Uprising takes the Pacific Rim story and turns it into a brand, a mechanism for Jaeger and Kaiju destruction and little else. While the human characters felt weak the previous go-around, here the attempts to flesh them out feel stunningly calculated. Almost as if the character building scenes came complete with a heading indicating as much. As usual, John Boyega is a likable and charismatic presence. He has a lot of range, but the comedic writing in particular for his character is rather embarrassing. He will often reflect on how sexy and handsome he thinks he is. Talking about his perfect facial structure. This happens more than once, and it's always played for comedy. And it's even more awkward because he often says these things to a 15-year-old girl, which is just weird to me. He will often talk about how handsome and sexy he thinks Scott Eastwood's character is, too. And it's always played for comedy, and it never works, and it got very cringeworthy. That 15-year-old girl is played by Kaylee Spaney, who I thought was one of the brightest spots of the film. She was charming, even when she was supposed to be annoying Boyega, and I'm excited to see what else she does. She has a bright future ahead of her. Her performance in the film, I would say, is the most respectable out of the leads, her and John Boyega, but what they do with Charlie Day's character, you're just going to go have to see the movie, because... It was unintentionally hilarious. I'm pretty sure everyone in my row was often laughing when you're not supposed to be laughing. Like, you, you see Charlie Day and you think, okay, comedian, comedy, it's always sunny. It's going to be, there's some funny stuff here, right? And yeah, there's some parts that are supposed to make you laugh. But eventually the film does some other things with his character. And you're not supposed to be laughing, but you are. Because it's just that embarrassing. The first half of the movie has brief scuffles between good Jaegers and bad, but for the most part, it's a lot of build-up. Once the real plot rears its head, the remaining half is almost entirely action. While this may be a relief for some, there's only so many times I can see a mech throw a monster into a building before it starts to get surprisingly boring. There's an evil scheme, a vial of kaiju blood, an attempt to threaten the population of Earth, but in the end it just comes down to two giant things punching each other a lot. There's even a scene where one of the Jaegers uses a weapon that rises a bunch of cars into the air and then forms them into a ball, and then he uses that ball of cars to punch another Jaeger with those cars. And there's never an attempt to verify whether or not there are no civilians in these cars, or whether or not there are any civilians even remotely near this parking deck and all these cars that just gets ripped off the street and then turned into a weapon. There's so many moments like that in the film that ask you to just not care and go with it. Apparently, DeKnight is a big fan of Mobile Suit Gundam, which is made clear by one specific moment in the film, but with Uprising, the homages feel like Americanization, and less like what makes Gundam special. Gundam isn't just about mechs in space, battles, and explosions. The major theme of every series in the franchise is the horror and pain of war, the devastation and senselessness of it. The mech battles are just the icing on the cake. Uprising understands how to present a watchable and entertaining action sequence, but there's nothing under the surface. It's all icing. For some, that might be all you're looking for. In that case, you'll probably be entertained by this movie. But for anyone else, this just feels like an aggressively corporate movie, trying to be a new brand, the next Transformers. It's complete with a stinger at the end as well, setting up a sequel. So it really does have everything a studio could possibly want. I'm going to give Pacific Rim Uprising a C-. If you just want to see monsters and mechs fighting with explosions and battles and a lot of really cool special effects, then you've probably already decided that you're going to like this movie. Just go see it and you'll have fun. 
but if you want to even remotely care about anything going on on the screen and watch a film that has some artistry to it, that actually has a little bit of depth under the surface, this probably isn't going to be your film, just like it wasn't for me. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for watching. As always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.